Hello, we are live. Just waiting for some more people to come. Hi, we're about to have a conversation, Artists at Home Convo with Derek Davis. So let me know when you see Derek here, we can get him in. This is very exciting. It's happening, hi Tori. We're waiting for the one and only dream climber. He's on his way. Excited to do another conversation. Artists at home convos are happening. They've been really great. If you haven't seen our previous ones, check them out. They're on our um, Instagram page on our IGTV. Let's see, is he here? Almost. All right. We're waiting on Derek Davis, the one and only. Let's see. Is he here? I'm covering my artist shirt. Let's see, Derek. Where's Derek? Let's see if I can add him. Hmm. Maybe having some technical difficulties. So for those of you who just joined, we're doing our another installment of our Artist at Home Convos, uh, which we started to just check in with different artists to see how they're doing and how they're staying creative during the pandemic. Um, obviously, the world has shifted a lot recently, and so we're going to also use this um, to, oh, there's Derek, to check in. Um, about different events. Okay, let's see. Here we go. You sent a request. Here we go. Eric, Dream Climber. I think it's it's connecting. Hey. Derek! Hey. Hi. What's up, my dear Austin? How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm great. Look at you with your, your glamorous plant and your light and your Darling, you fantastic. Darling, know, there, there needs to be scenery. There has to be yes. a background. <laughs> yes, I have a beautiful curtain. I'm I really setting it. the scene. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Minimalist here. Yes. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Made it by the skin of my teeth. Oh my gosh. Well, you made it. That's all yeah. that matters. <laughs> um, so I was just telling um, our, our guests here that we started this conversation series to kind of check in with artists and see how they're doing during the pandemic and how they're staying creative. And yeah. that was several weeks ago. And obviously the world has shifted very quickly in many different ways. And so um, this has kind of been a platform for us to check in about how, you know, just hearing about perspectives on all of those things. So it's been, it's been interesting to hear different people's takes on things. Yeah. yeah. Um, so um, I know I know you, but I think not everyone watching knows you. So just let's start. Just tell me a bit about yourself. Well, my name is Derek Davis. I go by the Dream Climber. That's my handle on everything. Um, and I am a theatrical actor primarily, but an actor overall. Uh, my, uh, my career has been based largely in the theater. Uh, I started in professional theater it, doing first regional gigs like Showboat and different shows like that. And then I moved on into uh, professional theater. And my first big show was The Lion King in Las Vegas. And then from there, I went to the touring company with The Lion King as Mufasa, and then transferred to the Broadway company covering Mufasa and Scar. Beyond that, I uh, was a part of Dallas Theater Center's uh, Tony Award winning season in Dreamgirls. And then 
from there, I moved on to Phantom, which is where you and I met. Yes, uh, and I think I told you this before, but I saw you in Dreamgirls. Did you? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. and yes. it was incredible. And I, I was like, love that we could make that connection. Because um, so that was cool. a fantastic show. It gets um, smaller and smaller, the world, as yes. you move through it, right? That's great. Um, yeah. And yeah, then we met in Phantom. Then we met in Phantom, and then after yeah. that, did uh, Carousel on Broadway, and I Dream down in Charlotte, and, and then came back to Phantom, and then now we are in a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, and here we are. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I think I probably met you about a year ago. Yeah. Because yeah. when did you come back? I Was came back. July? Yeah, a little before May, May. Okay. Okay, yeah. so around this time last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I had joined the tour after you had left. So uh -huh. I never crossed over with you prior to that. But your reputation preceded you. And everyone was like, we love Derek. We're so excited for him to come back. He's so kind. He's so thoughtful. And like voice of an angel, all that. And I was like, oh, this will be cool. And then you came. And sure enough, you just were amazing. Um, you, you. you know, you were just so kind and introduced yourself to everyone you didn't know. And... Um, I just have so many memories of you like Sunday morning before a matinee, like running around with your Bluetooth speaker, pumping everyone up. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Everything that you do is just so intentional. Everything you do and everything you say yeah. is, it has so much intention. Um, where do you think that comes from? Definitely um, my church background primarily, because mm -hmm. there, there are certain things, whether you are a believer or non-believer, uh, it's inconsequential. There's certain things in life that you take and that become a part of the way you behave because they're truths, you know? Right. Um, and one of those things is that the things that we say and the things that we do, they create. Us as creatives, we know how impactful a performance can be when we're creating in that manner. Mm -hmm. But uh, just on a human level, when you're just being interpersonal in your relationships, everything you say and everything you do leaves a lasting impression or can change someone's day, change someone's life, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I just really have been very careful to impact the world and the people that I come, in con come into contact with as positively as possible because I've been on the other side of the receiving of mm -hmm. positive as well as negative impact. So I don't ever want to be the one that negatively impacts anyone if I can help it. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. And also, I think that whatever you put out there will come back to you. Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, it will. Live long enough and it's going to find you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You can't hide. Can't hide from that. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, I really appreciate. I've always appreciated that about you. Um, so where? So we're in a pandemic. Don't know if everyone realizes, but, you know, this is what we're happened. here. This we're here. Here we are. So where were you? kind of physically, but also mentally, like right before everything kind of shut down. Yeah, I was in, in Astoria, in my apartment, um, planning a crazy, wonderful uh, birthday, 70th birthday party for my mother, and also a birthday party for myself, because uh, our birthdays are like within uh, a few days of each other, and just like doing all the things, and I had contract after contract lined up for the year, and I had the summer off, and I was ready and I had the savings and I was like, yes, we're going to do yeah. this. Everything is wonderful. You know, we just came off a tour and everybody was just ready to go. People were auditioning. Yeah. I was in the audition room. Everything was going great. And then it all just started. It all just started. Sorry. It all just started falling down. Just like coming down. Like boom, 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 boom. And then it was just a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And... um Emotionally, I was in a great place. Physically, I was in a great place. Spatially, I was in a great place. And then as soon as it happened, I felt like I was in a great place for the first two weeks, an okay place. And then it was just... Downhill. Rough, yeah. Yeah. So how were you able to pull yourself up? Or are you still, are you still pulling yourself back up? Or um, you know, how are I you think... taking care of yourself? Yeah, yeah. I, it's an everyday decision at this point, um, and some days are good, some days are bad. I tell people, everybody that I get a chance to talk to, like, you can't be too hard on yourself if you're having a bad day, because we're going through something that is really intense right now, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, and the thing that makes it really difficult mentally is because I find that as humans, 
we like to find an answer to things that have question marks at the end, you know, or where there's a space for the unknown. We like mm -hmm. to fill it in with something. Our mind works that way. It just solves the problem. Um, and there's so much unknown surrounding this, surrounding the, the virus, surrounding uh, the, the state of our world, surrounding what our world is going to look like when we're out of this thing, you know? So um, I just have to keep reminding myself every single day of the, the foundational things of life, like you're breathing. You have food in your kitchen. You have shelter. You have love. Like mm -hmm. these things you have, the sky is still blue, the sun is still shining. You know, I like to say God is still on the throne. He's not shifting. When he starts shifting, that's when I get nervous. <laughs> he, he's, he's still sitting still. So like the things that really, really, really matter in life, yeah. to life, are still okay. You mm -hmm. know, the things that we've created as a society to matter so much, yeah. those things are being shaken and it's okay. Because yeah. maybe some of those things need to dissipate and then we can come back to them at another time you know but mm -hmm. um yeah so i've just been to answer your question a little more succinctly what have i been doing to uh i've been just every single day waking up with gratitude and with a focus of what i'm going to do for the day to push mm -hmm. me toward what's coming yeah. Yeah. I think that's huge. I've, I mean, I'm on the same page. Gratitude has been huge and just kind of always writing out the list and checking in and making sure like, yeah. Hey, things. Okay. There are some good things happening. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, it's, there's a lot of change happening too, and it's going to be uncomfortable, Heck yeah. um, but it's going to be for the best, hopefully. Um, so I was also speaking of exciting things. It's Pride Month. Hey! Yeah! So how are you celebrating Pride? I know that the parades are not happening in the same way and yeah. everything's a little bit different, but are you are you celebrating? What are what are your where are you with that? Um I am celebrating, I guess. <laughs> how do you celebrate Pride when you can't come together and just like explode with joy and dance and, and just yeah. happiness? Um, I guess I'm celebrating by staying, being a good friend to the people who need a good friend, the LGBTQIA plus community, like just, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I think more than so, I, I think, okay, so pride for me is, is very close in proximity to the Black Lives Matter movement in that mm -hmm. they were both movements, one that has accomplished quite a bit at this point and one that's working on accomplishing things, yeah. you know? So um, I think that the way I'm celebrating it isn't the traditional way of the glitz and glam and the pomp and circumstance because we can't. But what I can do and what I have been doing is learning, like mm -hmm. doing my research so that I know the history, where the things, what what happened at what actually happened at Stonewall? What led up to it? Who were the people who who like precipitated it? Made it made it occur? You know, like all those things. Because I found <clears throat> in the Black Lives Matter movement that as much as I know, there's so much that I don't know, and we should as humans constantly be people. Uh, uh, pursuing learning and education and and getting more information. And so I guess the best way I can say that I'm uh, celebrating is to be a more informed individual. Yeah. And that's huge. Yeah. I think that's a, a wonderful way to celebrate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and very meaningful and important. And I think that that goes for for pride, for the Black Lives Matter movement, mm -hmm. everything. I think just the mm -hmm. more informed that we can be as people, the more we can serve the world and, you know, just understand yeah. each other. Yeah, because um, like Dr. King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And so whether it's your community or not, it's, it's, it's our duty to be aware of what's going on and to lend our hand to making it better, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, so to, to talk about the Black Lives Matter movement a little bit more, I yeah. know you, um, have, you've been, you've been very active, um, on social media about it. And, um, I know that you went to a protest that was incredible where everyone was dressed up. Stunning. Can you tell me about that? That looked yeah. amazing. It was a change the narrative, uh, march, um, because the media has such a fun time 
painting things negatively always because it's mm -hmm. sensational and it gets the ratings and all that. I get it. It's business, whatever. But um, some gents in uh, Harlem decided, just talking to each other, grassroots, grassroots movement, um, decided, well, let's do it like Dr. King used to do it. Let's do it like Ralph Abernathy used to do it. Let's do it like the greats who started this used to do it and look dignified in our approach so that as we're being peaceful, we're demonstrating who we are on the inside by what we look like on the outside, you know? Um, and word just spread and spread and spread and spread and spread. And there were tens of thousands of people there. It was just absolutely amazing to be marching with people of all colors, shapes, sizes, just, but all with the same focus. And what was so beautiful was as we were coming, because we started in Harlem on 125th and worked our way down to 90, I think, 3rd Street uh, on the east side. And as we were coming across the east side where, you know, all the real money is, like mm -hmm. the, the wealthy, the wealthy money. people, the all money, honey, <laughs> all money. Um, they all came out onto their balconies and opened their windows and were banging pots and screaming, black, black. Wow. like everybody was unified. And so the media is getting a lot of it wrong uh, in that they're showing the division. We're so unified mm -hmm. as a country, you know, at our base. Of course, there are people who are on both polar opposite sides, mm -hmm. but down the center, it's really wide and we're really connected, you know, and I, I, it was really, really beautiful to see that. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's so powerful. I love that. Um, and just kind of to piggyback off of that, I know you recently played Martin Luther King Jr. Yes. Um, so what, what did you learn from him that you, that is like your biggest takeaway? I'm sure the list is long, but <laughs> we don't have enough time. Um, I'm still learning from him. The, uh, the one thing that I've learned is that the fight that we're fighting isn't against individuals it's against a mindset mm -hmm. you know it's against the spirit of an individual and that well i've learned so many things if, if rapid firing through my head yeah but <laughs> i can't change the heart of a man i can't do that mm -hmm. um i can exemplify kindness and goodness and hopefully encourage them into a better way but the the, the changing of the heart is a choice that the individual has to make. But what I can do is I can change the laws that affect the way that other individual operates. And mm -hmm. that's one of the things that I'm trying to encourage people to do. Number one, uh, educate yourself about the legal system and educate yourself about the um, government, the way it's, it's set up. Uh, and so that you can make um, informed decisions about who you would vote for. We can't just uh, haphazardly be voting for people, uh, and specifically in your local government, you know, your local, your regional, your city, your state government, mm -hmm. because that's really where the impact happens. Yes, of course, the federal government is vitally important as well, but the impact that we're looking to affect um, is happening in New York, like right now. We just finished our, our voting season. Um, and so one thing that I learned from Dr. King is affect change where you can affect change and voting we can all do. Spreading love and, and being an example for other people we can all do. Mm -hmm. um, and then your gifting, use your gifting to the best of your ability to, to uh, promote change and move the, 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 you know, the, the struggle forward, you know? Um, and so that's what I've been doing a lot of soul searching on. And for me, I, you know, I love humanity. I, mm -hmm. I love passionately. And so uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I can spread the love and, yeah. and use my gifting and my, my talent to do just that. Yeah. And, and with that said, are you, are you using your art to do that at all in any way? Do you think that artists should be using their, their platform and their art form to, yes. to do that? It's absolutely vital. It's vital. I one thing that I did from I Dream, I made a little video on YouTube. I'm going to post it this week. I, I put it in my story. I didn't put it on my page. I'll put it on my page this week before the week is out. Pardon me. Um, artists have to use their platform. Mm -hmm. um, good art reflects life, and so whatever's going on has to be reflected in art. We have a platform. We have a voice. We we, we we have the responsibility to 
trumpet the change that needs to happen because we are the effectors of change. I mean, think about it. Who, if, if you think about what influenced you to be the person that you are today, mm -hmm. it was what you saw on TV, what you heard in music, what you, what you saw all around you, the fashion that you wore, the, the, you know, all those things influenced your personality, you know? Um, and so as, as a performer, as a singer, as someone who, whose job is to grab the emotions of an audience and pull them in a direction, that's my skill set. Mm -hmm. you know so of course it's it's very important for me to do that but also um for those of us who are successful enough to have people who are watching us we have to be saying something yeah it's our, it's our responsibility to tell people what they need to be hearing and to guide them in a good direction so um yes i think it's very important <laughs> <laughs> it's like what you said earlier that you you can't necessarily change someone's heart yeah. But, but you sure as heck can touch their heart. You sure can. You and, sure can. And your and art, art is your, your tool. Yep. So yep. that's that's very powerful. Um, so getting back to Phantom, um, yeah. in the same vein, you were one of very few Black men to portray Phantom, mm -hmm. um, which is such an iconic role. What What was that experience like and what did that mean to you? It meant the world. Phantom was the first show that my parents took me to see as a young person and um it really shaped my love for musical theater and so to be given the opportunity to step into the role that i watched as a kid and fell in love with musical theater because of is a dream that i honestly didn't have the capacity to dream for myself mm -hmm. the people around me dream dreamt it for me before i i dreamt it for myself because i, I had never seen a person of color played the role. Uh, before I played it, Robert Guillaume had played it in California uh, briefly for a few months. Um, and then uh, Norm Lewis played it on Broadway for a few months. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I was the third one in the 30 plus year history of the show wow. worldwide to be played by anybody other than uh, a, 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 a white person, a person yeah. of, you know, Which is ridiculous. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's ridiculous, but yeah. Thank God we're moving in the right direction. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God, you know? Um, and thank God for people like Mary Sugarman, who was the casting director at Tara Rubin. And, uh, uh, um, yeah. And, yep. she, and she said, um, let's put them in the mix. Let's put them in the mix. And then for people like Seth Sklar to 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 say, yes, you, you have it. You, you're the one, you know? And then, of mm -hmm. course, for Cameron McIntosh and Andrew Lloyd Webber and all the rest to say, that's, that's our guy. We can trust him to be the one to bring this show around the entire country as a man of color with the Trump administration. Like, it's just, there's, there's so much trust that was put in me. And it was just so beautiful to see. And I'm grateful, mm -hmm. grateful. Then I was, now I am, and I forever will be grateful to them for that. Yeah, and I mean, that's definitely an added layer, like you said, to be traveling across the entire country. It's not like you're just staying in New York. Right. In that right. little bubble, in that yeah. little <laughs> yeah, extremely yeah, liberal you know, bubble. Yeah, yeah, no, we yeah. went everywhere. We went yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And, and, you... and oddly enough, by and large, just to add this point, the country was wildly receptive, you know, because yeah. it was... A, a company of excellence, not a company of specific colors, but a company of excellence mm -hmm. that was bringing a story forth. And it was just showing that that can be done and yeah. it should be done and it is gonna be done now, trust. Yes. <laughs> yes. And what was um, the response that you got from fans? Fans? Fans, Oh, yeah. they went crazy. Yeah. They loved it. Yeah. They absolutely loved it. And um, specifically fans who looked like you. Mm -hmm. who were who were able to see themselves like oh, yeah. did you have many experiences like that hearing from them yeah i had i had quite a few but um one specific will forever stand out and i wish i could remember his instagram handle but um uh i'll repost that as well in my story so that you guys can check that out if you want to but he after the show in atlanta I went out and you know the stage door and you sign the, the, the playbills and mm -hmm. greet people to take pictures and all of that. I was doing that and when I was finished, a mother, his mother came holding him by the shoulders, wailing, just tears, tears, tears. And she held him in front of me and said, look at him, look at him, talking to her son. 
now you know you can do anything in this life, anything in this life. Wow. And um, he was younger then because that was my first time out. He was still in high school and he graduated high school and now he's attending BU uh, and he's going for uh, drama, theatrical studies. And wow. he's doing incredibly well. We did some coachings together just the last month and he's brilliant. He's, he's a Shakespearean style actor. He's just really, really amazing. So um, that one will stick with me forever, forever, yeah. forever, forever. That's amazing. You changed his life. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. very cool. And like, I know. And he changed mine. Yeah. He changed mine because in that yeah. moment, I got to see the me that saw the phantom and couldn't see somebody that looked like him, yeah. see the phantom and see somebody who looked like him. Mm -hmm. And now his life moving forward, hopefully will be light years beyond where I am now, you know, because he, he just got an example of who he is. And that's why it's so important that art and this world reflect everybody who exists yeah. in this world equally. Yeah, and not even just to show a young person who looks like you, you can do this on the stage, but that you have a voice that's important and you can do this yes. in the world. In life, yeah. yeah, regardless of what you do. Yeah. You matter, you're just yes. as important and your excellence is just as worthy of, of, of you know, uh, accolades and, and, and success. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's so beautiful. I love that. I, yeah. I'm gonna, I like, we'll hold on to that forever. Um, so I'm asking this kind of to educate myself as an ally to the black community in the yes. theater industry. Yeah. Um, so you ha have previously worked in the Lion King, have mm -hmm. had in, been various companies, various roles. Um, yeah. And you've also worked in, which was a primarily black cast. Yes. And you've also worked in shows such as Phantom, that's a primarily white cast. Yes. And I'm curious to know um, if there are differences in the way that you feel the weight of the responsibility to advocate for yourself and to, um, and, and for the black community and, um, and just if you, if you approach those experiences differently, because I, this is something that hadn't really crossed my mind until recently, and I feel very mm -hmm. ignorant for, to have not ever questioned that. So I'm just right. curious about your experience. Um, yeah, it was completely different. I was spoiled yeah. coming into this industry with, with Lion King, completely mm -hmm. spoiled. I was surrounded by people who looked like me. I was surrounded by people who were familiar with my um, culture's upbringing, you know? Um, and so it felt like this is what Broadway is, you know? Um, yes, I right. knew it was an anomaly. I wasn't blinded to the fact that every cast doesn't look like that. Yeah. But it felt instantly like family with no curve, you know, uh, no learning curve. Um, then I got to Phantom and Phantom was different, was, was a different experience from say like Carousel mm -hmm. because in Phantom, there was the added pressure of being the lead in the right. show full time. You know, I was the lead in Lion King for a season, but when I was on Broadway, I was the cover in those two roles. Right. When I got to Phantom, I was the Phantom, and I was the first black Phantom to, to be on the touring company. And that was the headline of every mm. news article that I had to do, yeah. no matter what I said in the, in the interview, that was what was on the headline, which is yeah. great because it needed to happen and people needed to know that that's what yeah, was occurring. Sure. Um, but being there, I felt like I didn't have one millimeter of space to mess up mm. or to be less than 100% excellent or to not show up to the show. There was, it came a point the first time out that stage management had to take me to the side and said, you know, you can take a day off because I was not taking days off. Right. I was like, I'm going to do every show. I'm going to be at every show. I have to be there. People need to know that I'm excellent. People need to know that I do the work. And, and there was a lot of pressure, you know? Yeah, which um, are things that you do anyway. Right. But it's, it's interesting right. to hear that you felt you had to like further prove that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I definitely felt that. Um, Thank God, by and large, the cast as a commu and, and the crew and the creative were all very supportive. And it was a, a, definitely a family feel. Mm -hmm. um, there was the slight difference of, which was kind of a beautiful difference to me, of the different cultures and different backgrounds of people 
who were, I mean, you were there, you know, there's, there's, there's Italians, there's Greeks, there's Jewish people, there's Americans, there's, there's, there's uh, Native Americans, there's Asians, there's, there's uh, Indian Americans, there's African Americans, there's Latino Americans, like there was everybody in that, that yeah. company. So there was um, the understanding and the respecting of each other's culture that had to occur. But um, the same way you say up until this point, there were things that you were ignorant of. Mm -hmm. Up until this point, there were things that the entire casting company were ignorant of, you know? Mm -hmm. And I didn't have the wherewithal because I was leading the company and leading the show to stop and educate everybody on everything. That yeah. would have taken way too much because you know, well, the Phantom is all consuming. It's mm -hmm. exhausting. Uh, from from the press junket to the shows, it's just a lot. Yeah, plus um, you're traveling. And traveling every yeah. two weeks, three weeks, whatever. Uh, yeah. So I did feel an enormously larger amount of pressure and stress doing the Phantom role, but I welcomed it because mm -hmm. uh, it was an honor to be able to be the person to go out and do all that work for yeah. sure. And to pave the way for for yeah. hopefully yeah. several others now. Several others, yes. several others, yes, yeah. yes. Um, so what do you hope that Broadway will look like when everything opens up again? I'm not naive or ignorant and so, or delusional. I hope that Broadway doesn't try to become something that it's never been overnight. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because that would be doing something for the sake of doing something yeah. and making sure that we show face. Oh no, I think you froze. I'm frozen. Okay, you're oh. back, you're back. Make sure you <laughs> say face, that's where we cut off. <laughs> um, yeah, because you know how, how when, when something is cachet, something is in style, everybody wants to put it on so that we're, we're all poised to look like what everybody else looks like. I hope Broadway yeah. is open-minded and very conversational on both sides so that the conversation mm -hmm. can happen and people can learn. But in the long, the, the medium to long, to, short, medium and long term, I hope that um, Broadway can look like the rest of the world looks, like New York City looks when mm -hmm. you walk through. Every color, every, every, type of person you can imagine given the opportunity to to have a shot at every single role mm -hmm. every single role because it's been proven time and time again look at hamilton the biggest blockbuster in musical theater history yeah is played by every single color mm -hmm. every single sex every single sexual orientation like it's just a beautiful amalgamation and rainbow of humanity mm -hmm. it reflects human and that's why it works yeah because Everybody can see themselves represented and, and everybody wants to be a part of something like that, yeah. you know? Yeah. So um, I hope that's what Broadway looks like. But I, again, I really just hope that it doesn't get stuck trying to look like something, but it, it actually becomes that thing deep down inside by continuing conversation and continuing to be open. Because mm -hmm. this thing is going to change. It's going to it's going to morph as humanity changes and different things will come up. And, and when uh, it's Black Lives Matter now, yes, and we need to focus on that 100%. But if we can focus on that, then we can focus on sexual discrim sex discrimination, you know, like gender discrimination. Mm -hmm. And we can focus on uh, Asian American discrimination and, and Native American, like everybody should just be able to, the, hopefully the Black Lives Matter movement opens up the conversation for everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I also hope that it is a conversation and not just people making assumptions yes. on what what sh they should be doing. Yeah, talk, let's have a, let's yeah. talk about it, yeah. let's talk about it. I hope when, when, when we walk into the, the, the first rehearsal of a show, somebody says, hey, look, listen, all right, great, I'm ready to have, happy that everybody's here, you know, we're gonna start this show and we're gonna be blessed to do this show because everybody in here is gonna bring something from their background to this show. And if you ever feel uncomfortable, this is an open and safe space. Open mm -hmm. your mouth and say something and we'll work on it together. Boom! Yeah. Automatically, everybody's guards are down. Everybody feels heard. Everybody feels respected. Mm -hmm. I hope that we can do that. Yeah, and that they respect each other as well. It's yes. like it goes both ways. And I hope yeah. that that's something that, that can be you know, sustainable in the future.
one hundred percent. Yeah. Um, I I also well in in preparing for this conversation with you, I was thinking about um, <laughs> the first time you and I did a Q and A together in ah, Toronto, yes. <laughs> and it was for a group of of university students. Yeah. And it was yeah. wonderful. And I remember they asked you a question about how you keep the show fresh every day. Yeah. And you dropped like the biggest piece of wisdom on me I've ever heard when you were talking about um first time, it's, last time. It's it's what someone in the audience is their first show, first yeah. time ever seeing a show, and for someone else it's their last time ever seeing a show. Yeah. And yeah. I thought that was <laughs> I've 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 told you this before, but I've heard it's always someone's first show. But when you said last, I was like <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What's happening? And you know what's really interesting about the last show? You can you can always find somebody in the audience that you can imagine it being their last show. Mm. And usually they're dead center in the front row. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that that old couple that's just holding each other's hands and just lovingly reminiscing on life and just enjoying the moment. Yeah. Immediately the show is done for them. For everybody, obviously, but I'm giving you a thousand percent of my, my energy because you deserve it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, that <laughs> that really just blew my mind. Yeah, um, that's, that's, and I feel that. like that also just speaks to yourself in the way that you approach your work, yeah. um, completely. But also in the way that um, you you lead others. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that your your leadership qualities and skill come is something that comes naturally, or is that something that you've worked on? I think my capacity to love humanity is something that's a gift that I have. You know. Um, sometimes it's a blessing, sometimes it's not so much a blessing, <laughs> but I think the leadership is a choice. Mm -hmm. um, that's something I have to choose to do and something that I have to work on consistently to make sure that I'm leading in a fashion that uh, is effective for the people who I'm leading. You know, mm -hmm. you, I can't just be the same Derek to everybody because right. everybody doesn't need the same version of me, the same yeah. facet of me. Um, but when I approach anything in a leadership capacity, I, I definitely lead with love. And sometimes love is tough. Sometimes love is really sweet and, and, and hugging. But always love is for the person that's being led, not for the person that's leading. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And who do you think you learned that from? My parents, um, for sure. They uh, were the best. Oh, wow, I just got choked up. They oh. were the best leaders I've ever seen. Wow. They were a partnership like I've never known in life. Uh, they had their ups and downs, but they stuck it out hard together. Mm -hmm. My mother was, my father worked nights so that my mother could be home with my brother and myself at night. And my mother worked during the day. So they like had the opposite shifts. Mm. Um, and they were, they were strict. Uh, but it was in love, and um, it, they were just the best. They, yeah. They're who I get it from, 100%. Yeah. That's incredible. Well, you're definitely doing an amazing job passing that along Thank um, you. To, to everybody that you meet. I um, try. Yeah. <laughs> so, because you're clearly full of wisdom, which I always love about you, what is your advice for young people who want to create change in the world? What's my advice for young people? want to create change do it like it's do it mm -hmm. there's literally nothing impossible in this life nothing when i tell you nothing nothing everything that is worth having takes a lot of work and work isn't always fun um but if you want to create change do it create the change you have to be that change first mm -hmm. so the work happens on the inside first, but once you have it inside of you, once it's your heartbeat, then the outer workings are automatic, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you just have to put to work the things that you want to see changed. And also, no matter how small the change you affect, if you're affecting it toward the end that you're looking towards, then you're affecting change. Mm -hmm. Change doesn't happen overnight. Right. Change, some change takes generations to occur. Sometimes you're doing a little part of it. Sometimes you're doing the full part of it. Sometimes you're doing the end part of something that somebody else started. That's a biblical principle. So, um, but the, 
if you want change to happen, do it. Mm -hmm. Make it happen. Yeah. Make it happen. Make it happen inside first. I mean, there's a wealth of resource in the internet uh, that I didn't have growing up. You don't even have to go to the library anymore. You can just yeah, go online. Yeah. Um, avail yourself to as much information as you can. Uh, fortify yourself with knowledge and then go out and make the change. Amazing. Well, I think we can end on that. That's pretty spectacular. <laughs> Man, yes. Wow. Oh, one more thing. How can yeah. people support you? How can they follow you? What are, how yes. can people support your work? You can support me. Um, follow me on Dream Climber, Dream Climber on Instagram, Dream Climber on, I think on, definitely on Twitter. I don't do very much Twitter, uh, <laughs> but uh, mostly Instagram, but Twitter. And then uh, also Facebook, but if you go on the real Derek Davis dot com, D E R R I C K, uh, everything is there. That's my website. And just come out to the shows. I'm actually putting together a tour. This is oh. like a secret. <laughs> um, <laughs> tell me more. Uh, can you tell me more? I don't know if you can tell me more. Of, oh, say it again. Can you tell me more or no? Yes. Uh, it's going to be um, the journey of my career told through song. Uh, and it's going to be going around the country uh, later this year into next year. Um, and yes, it's Dory. It's yes, Dory. you heard it here uh, first. You heard it here first. Um, and the first city that I've contracted already is Lincoln. Uh, going back to some of the cities that we did Phantom in for sure. Yeah. Um, but Lincoln, I'll be there, uh, provided COVID doesn't knock it out, uh, in... November? No, October, wow. September, October. Yeah, the middle of October. Yeah. That's so exciting. Derek, yeah. I want to come. <laughs> well, come on. I'll, I'll let I'll you know. Come down where are you? I didn't even I'm ask. in Toronto. <laughs> well, let's see. Maybe I can do one in Toronto. I love Toronto. Yeah, please come. <laughs> good God, y'all have a good in Canada. We'll Oof. have you. Yes. We'll welcome you back. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I'll be back to Toronto regardless because it's gorgeous and it's only like an hour and 15 minutes on the plane. I know, it's so close. <laughs> we love Toronto. <laughs> yeah, yes. All right. Well, thank you so much. My pleasure, sweetheart. Thank you for having me. All right. I'll talk to you soon. I okay. love you very much. Love you too, Dee. Bye. Bye-bye.